So, we put together some elements to make compounds, molecular and ionic. Now let's take some of those chemicals, those uh, molecules and those compounds, and put them together in chemical reactions. Okay, so here are uh, some reactions that we will call composition reactions, or simple composition reactions. It's just essentially how elements are coming together to form compounds, whether they be ionic or molecular. Okay, so let's do a simple reaction where, let's say, nickel reacts with oxygen to form a compound. Now, CMPD, compound. Okay, now, we want to take those two elements and form a compound. So what do we write? Well, we're going to write a formula where we are reacting together things called reactants to produce, on the other side of an arrow, things called products. All right, now nickel. How do we write nickel down? Well, we know that the nickel, nickel is Ni, and we're going to always write, when we do chemical equations, and I make sure all my students do this all the time, is to identify the state of matter for everything here uh, in the chemical equation or the balanced reaction. Balancing's coming up. So here's nickel, and it's a solid room temperature. How do you know? Check your periodic table. And by the way, you don't even have to, because you know that it's a metal. And nickel's solid at room temperature. All the metals are, except for one. Mercury. And gallium, if you put it in your hand, actually melts pretty quickly, because its melting point is just a little bit above room temperature. But it's still solid. At room temperature. <laughs> Reacts with oxygen. Oh, no! Oh no! You've got to put O2. Remember, oxygen is diatomic. So don't forget those diatomic elements. What's that rule again? No group 7. NO and all the group 7 or 17. Those are the ones that are going to be diatomic. So here we've got nickel reacting with oxygen. We draw, draw an arrow because we're producing something. We don't put an equal sign. Man, some students are writing equal signs here all the time. It doesn't equal nothing. It's not equaling something. It's not math. And that's probably a good thing for you, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to produce, we're going to make, we're going to form something on the other side. We're going to make a compound. Now, I didn't tell you which charge of nickel to use because nickel actually is one of those multivalent type of metals. So which one do you do? And which one do you use? <laughs> you use the one that is going to be more prevalent. And usually in a data booklet or a periodic table, they tell you which one to use. And a lot of times, even on tests, they'll tell you which one to use. But when you don't know, Use the one that's more popular, usually the one that's identified first. It's the one to the left of the other one on a periodic table. And so that means that you're going to use for this compound nickel with a two positive charge. Now, I'm going to do this just once, but you've got to get into the flow of never doing this, which is writing the charges on any kind of equation. You've got to get rid of those charges because they don't actually... Uh, get put into the chemical reaction unless you're writing something called a net ionic equation. And we're not doing that right now. Right now we're writing non-ionic equations. So, nickel is a 2 positive. Oxide is O with a 2 negative. Do you see the compound that that will form with a 2 positive and a 2 negative there? Absolutely. That's going to form a 1 to 1 ratio. And so really, what you write is NiO, NiO. That is nickel 2 oxide. That's the compound that forms. Now, all ionic compounds are solid at room temperature. So you're going to put an S there. And that is your equation, your reaction. It's not balanced. Because we have to actually conserve all of this matter from the reactant side to the product side. And so to do that, we have to balance those atoms. So what are we going to do? We're going to recognize that we've got one nickel here. We're going to call that one mole of nickel. Uh, right now, we can just say one atom of nickel. That's good enough. So one atom of nickel, and we've got two atoms of oxygen in one entire oxygen molecule. But we don't have two oxygens here. We've got one nickel, but we, we don't have two oxygens. So what we do is we balance, not by putting numbers here, because that formula is now sacred. You can't touch that. But what you can do is you can alter the numbers in front to say how many of those units or those compounds or elements that you need. So, if I've got one nickel here and one nickel here, that's cool for now. Now I've got two oxygens here. I put a two in front. This and this will make two NiOs. Now I've got two oxygens. 
But whoa, even though I have two oxygens here and two here, now I got two nickels. Well, go finish it off by putting a two there. And now you've got yourself two nickels, two nickels, two O's, two O's, and you've got a two to one to two ratio and that reaction is balanced. Some teachers will say, well, put a one in front there so you know you're finished. No, don't do that. Don't do that because it's not right. When you have to put a one in front in a chemical reaction, you don't put anything because just taking for granted you got one of those. Don't do it. Nobody else does on the planet. Now, here's another reaction. This one is not an ionic reaction where we form an ionic compound. This one's a molecular one. But it's still a composition reaction because we're taking elements and we're putting them together to make a compound. Take a look. Sulfur reacts with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide gas. Sounds simple. Sulfur reacts with oxygen to form sulfur. Now, you're going to sulfur dioxide. One S and O. Two O's. Right, it says gas, so you put a G here. You know that oxygen and sulfur, they don't look like that. Now you've got to be really careful when you write down these elements. Remember that sulfur is, when it's by itself, S8. When it's alone, it is sulfur and it's octatomic. And it's a solid at room temperature. You can check periodic table to just see what the solids, liquids, and gases are. That's a solid at room temperature. Oxygen, you know, is O2, and it's a gas. That reaction is not balanced, but it is kind of complete in terms of the elements making a compound now. So what do we do? We start at the beginning. Oh, we just start at the beginning. Eight S's. One S. Put an eight in front. Eight S's. Two O's. No two O's. Some people look at that and go, well, I got two O's, I'm done. No, 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 you put the eight in front. Eight times two is 16. Not eight plus two? No, 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 no. Look, you've got eight of these things. Eight of these things. And in one of those things, you have two O's. So if you have eight of those things, you've got 16, right? So you always take that number in front, that coefficient, and you multiply it through all of those numbers of atoms that you have in that molecule or compound. 8 times 2 is 16. So you've got 16 there. What do you do here? You put an 8 in front. And it's balanced 1, 8, 8. And there's another simple composition reaction. Here are a couple of more ionic reactions. Let's see how you do with them. Okay, iron reacts with chlorine or chlorine gas to form a compound. Okay, so what do you write down? Start at the beginning. It says iron. So you know that iron is a metal at room temperature. So it's iron solid, Fe solid. Okay reacts with chlorine. Now I could have put down chlorine gas. Now it's not just Cl, diatomic, so it's Cl2. You gotta check to make sure that you remember those no group sevens. Okay, iron reacts with chlorine to form a compound. Remember, if you're not told, what iron do you use? We well, use the, the charge on the periodic table that, that occurs first, which tells you which one is most prevalent or found in natural circumstances. It's Fe with a 3 positive charge again. So, it's Fe with a 3 positive coming together with Cl, not Cl2, because when chlorine reacts with the iron, now we lose that diatomic thing, and we just go to the table, take one of the elements, and then find its charge. So, Cl is a negative 1 because it's in group 17. Those are all negative 1s. So, how many of these do you need to accept an electron? And how many of these do you need to lose electrons? One Fe3 positive is going to lose three electrons. And this is going to gain one. And this is now going to gain two. And this is going to gain three. And now we've got, what's that formula? It's Fe, one Fe, for every three Cl's. And that is the formula FeCl3. Hey, now, all ionic compounds are what at room temperature? They are solid, man. And so, that is the reaction. Now let's balance it. Could be a little trickier. 1Fe. Okay. 1Fe. Ooh, that's good. 2Cl's, 3Cl's. Oh, no, 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 no. What happens now? Okay, look. When you have those kinds of weird ratios, what you got to do is just look for the lowest common multiple of those two numbers. And 2 and 3, well, let's make 6. So therefore, if we have 3 here and 2 here, let's go 3 in front here. 3 times 2 is 6 Cl's now. What do we do here? Put a 2 in front. Okay. And now, what we've got is 
3 times 2 is 6 CLs here, 2 times 3 is 6 CLs here, but now we've got 2 FEs. What do you do? You put the 2 in front, 2, 3, 2, lowest whole number ratio for balancing. That one's done. Okay. See, it's not scary, is it? Here's an equation. Somebody says balance it. You say, okay, just got to make sure I've got the same number of atoms on my left side, the reactant side, as I do on the product side. 1CA, 1CA, 1C, 1C. Oh, no, I got three O's here. Yeah, but you got two here plus one is a total of three, right? So this is balanced, one to one to one. Oh, put the ones in front. Don't you dare. 